Today, we're gonna talk about energy. Ah, energy! We can take the things we've been learning in class and put kind of a philosophical twist on it. Using energy, we can relook at how things work and move in our universe. Let's first define energy. Energy is the ability to do work. If you want to do work, you need energy. So, what's work? Work is just force applied through a displacement. So, that just means that as you apply a force and it causes a displacement, you're doing work. If there is no displacement, then you're not doing any work. We're gonna measure work using the unit a joule. We're gonna use the symbol J to measure what a joule is. Turns out that a joule is the same unit that we use for energy, which makes sense because it takes energy in order to do work. Now, we haven't defined what a joule is yet, but using the work formula, force times displacement, we can figure it out. If work is force times displacement, and the SI unit for force is a newton, and the SI unit for displacement is meters, then a joule is just a newton meter. Ha! Let's do a quick example about work. I know that this bowling ball weighs about 67 newtons. That is the amount of force that gravity is pulling down on it, so that's the minimum amount of force I need to push it back up. If I just hold this 67 newton bowling ball right here, and I just hold it, I'm not doing any work. That might seem weird that I'm not doing any work, but work only happens when there is the displacement. Now, there is a difference between work done on and work done by an object. Right now, I'm not doing any work on the object, but there is work done by my muscles. My muscles are moving through a displacement and back. They're applying a force through a displacement, which is work done, which is why you feel tired just holding a bowling ball. If I take this 67 Newton bowling ball and raise it half a meter, then I applied 33.5 joules of work on the bowling ball. We need to talk about the cosine theta term. What that just means when you have work is force times displacement times cosine theta, that just means that the force and displacement have to be parallel to each other. That means if you're applying a force to an object and the displacement is actually not parallel to the object, you're not doing any work. So if you go over, pick up your giant fridge, and walk around your apartment at a constant velocity, you aren't doing any work because your force is pointing up, your displacements will be moving to the side, and then that means that your work is none. You're not doing any work, no work. All right, imagine that you take a bowling ball and that you have the bowling ball above your head, mm, let's say half a meter. Is the bowling ball doing any work on your nose right now if it's half a meter above your nose? No, it's not. It's not doing any work. But could it do work? The bowling ball isn't doing any work on your nose right now, but it could. It has the potential. And that gets us to potential energy. Potential energy is just energy stored. It could do work. Now, let's talk about the bowling ball hanging above your head right now. Let's say it's hanging half a meter above your head. Now the potential energy we were talking about is a special type of potential energy. It's gravitational potential energy. We're gonna use this symbol, U, U-G. U is just gonna be our symbol for potential energy. Now, potential energy, gravitational potential energy is gonna be known as mass times gravity times Y, which just makes sense. If you have an object with a bigger mass, that will mean it'll have a bigger potential energy. It could do more work. Uh, compare a bowling ball versus a little pebble. The bowling ball with the bigger mass could do more work. If you're on a planet where G changes, that could change the potential energy as well. And like we discussed before, our height, which we're gonna know as Y, our distance up and down. Now, gravitational potential energy is just one type of potential energy. There's spring potential energy, there's also chemical potential energy, there's also nuclear potential energy. 
Just like work and energy, potential energy has the SI unit of a joule. If you take the equation we just looked at, potential energy is mass times gravity times height, then you can do a quick unit check to see that, hey, the unit comes out to be a joule. We just got done talking about potential energy, which is energy held in readiness. It could do work. Now we're gonna talk about kinetic energy, energy of movement. Now we're gonna look at kinetic energy, or energy in motion. I'm not going to derive kinetic energy here, but I'm gonna do it at a different video, so stay tuned. Kinetic energy has the equation K is equal to one half mv squared, meaning that the amount of mass you have also affects your kinetic energy, as well as your speed. The faster you go, the more kinetic energy you have. Now here's the cool thing. If you look at kinetic energy and velocity, their relationship isn't directly proportional. There's a squared in there. So if you double velocity, kinetic energy will increase by four times. It's kind of like the inverse squared law, just not inversed. Once again, you can do a quick unit check to make sure that the SI unit for kinetic energy is joules. Just plug in some values, make sure you have the right SI unit, and you'll get out a joule. Hopefully you've been picking up that all the things that we've been looking at, the SI unit for them is just a joule. And this makes sense because this brings us to a really big point in physics and in science. And it's known as the law of conservation of energy. What the law of conservation of energy says is that energy can't be created nor destroyed. The total amount of energy you have in beforehand will be the same sort of amount of energy, the same type, the same value as you did after. Knowing that energy can't be created or destroyed brings us to a really cool principle known as the network energy principle, which just says that if you're going to change your kinetic energy or you're going to change your potential energy, you need to have work. You need to do work on an object to change its kinetic energy or potential energy. If we look at work again, we notice that it's only dependent on the force and displacement of that object. One thing that it's not dependent on is time. Time! You guys are really getting sick of this joke, aren't you? Work is not time dependent, meaning it does not matter how quickly you do a job. If you do it with the same amount of force and the same amount of displacement, then you did the same work. Now what is time dependent is power. Power, I'm going to pump you up. Power is time dependent. Power is how quickly is work being done or how quickly is energy being released. Power has the units of a watt. What? Watt. What? Watt. What? Watt. The SI unit for power is a watt. And once again, if we do a quick units check, we can see that a watt is a joule per second. Let's do some examples.